Hi, I'm Clint Garrison. I'm 22 years old. I'm from Columbia, Kentucky, and uh, I race the UTV Unlimited class in this uh, full tube chassis Razor Bogey, as well as the Rock Bouncer class in Liberty Two, built by Reject Fab. I found the National Rock Racing Association. Um, at the time, it was Southern Rock, um, but I'd, I'd had a cage built for a 1000 XP full body just for trail riding, and um, the guy that built it was going to race that weekend. He's like, you ought to come race, and I was like, well, heck, why not? So I ended up registering, showed up and raced, fell in love with it, and been doing it ever since. If I was to describe rock bouncing as uh, to somebody that uh, had never heard of it before, it would be... Lots of horsepower, lots of adrenaline. When I pull up to the line, you know, the first thing it's, or the only thing that's going through my head is getting to the finish line. Anybody will tell you that's, that's raced, you know, you got to be thinking 200 foot ahead of you. You can't be thinking about what's right in front of you, you know. And, and, I, and as I'm sitting on the line before they drop the flag, I'm thinking, okay, you got to turn here, you got to jump this. You know, I'm, I'm playing it all through my head, you know, before I take off. And I, I think that really helps me. But I, I'm, I'm a big on walking the course a lot and, and really trying to memorize it. One of our ground solutions, uh, basically we specialize in uh, forest emulsion, land clearing, and uh, right-of-way maintenance. Here on this project, we're clearing a two-acre lot for a new home site, and here behind me I've got a dedicated forestry emulsion machine, um, 175 horsepower, and uh, take down a pretty big tree with it, you know, 12, 14 inches, pretty easy. and even bigger than that if you want to sit there and grind on it. But I got another crew that uh, stays on the, the power line right away, 40 hours a week. We, we clean under the power lines and force your mulch and, um, for the local electric company here. My favorite part about the, the whole racing scene and stuff it's not even all the racing I love to race it's it's awesome you know I love the horsepower I love being behind the wheel and everything but it's half as much being there at the park with all the people but I've made a lot of good friends through racing you know I've got a lot of uh, a lot of people that, that we race with and competitive with and they want to beat me and I want to beat them on Saturday but we're as good of friends as uh, as it gets you know I, I talked to Daniel Heckley and uh, he, I've actually sold him a, a skid steer not too long ago, and uh, shoot, that, that made us become even better friends. Wade Good, he, he doesn't live but about an hour from here, and he's helped me work on stuff. He's a heck of a mechanic, and um, shoot, it's, it's endless. Uh, Timmy Cameron, he's, he's took stuff. I've took stuff to his shop, and he's worked on it for me when I couldn't figure it out. Um, the, the people out here are, are as, as friendly as it gets. Just really good people. Yeah. But I'd like to thank a few people as well. Um, Reject Fab, they built an awesome chassis. Uh, he, he's helped me out since I've got it, you know, a few times. Anytime I need anything, he's willing to help. Um, another big one I'd like to thank is Diddy's Big Block Race Shop. He's always helped me with the UTV uh, shocks and stuff. And then once I got Liberty 2, he helped me out a ton on it. He redid everything. Dustin's Off-Road Fabrication, he's always, you know, pretty much from the beginning been willing to help out on any kind of fabricating or welding that I needed. Um, EB Power Sports, uh, he's helped me out on some parts. Uh, JJ Supply North Carolina, I just got a fire suppression system off him, speaking of safety. Um, it's a, gonna be a really good thing to put in there and everybody needs one really. Uh, Fritz Performance Transmissions, they do the big, big buggy transmissions and uh, they sure are tough. RCV axles, they're, uh, they're the way to go whenever it comes to 
what we're doing, you know, putting through the abuse and stuff. They, they jumped on board not too long ago and Ground Solutions is my company. A big thank you to them. Anthony's Auto, uh, local car dealership here, he's, he's helped me out along the way too. And Performance Side by Side Bushings, they, uh, James Shelley and Crystal are awesome people. They've always helped me out through the years with different stuff. I got the bushings on this razor buggy as well as their tie rods. They make some great parts. I'm Dustin Patterson and I own Dustin's Off-Road and Fabrication. Uh, I've been working with Clint's for probably four or five years now. Uh, he's been a big part in how I've got started in this. He's always kept me busy and he actually hollered at me over the weekend and said he bought an RS1 and was going to race it this coming up weekend. And we squeeze him in and got him a cage going. And I think he's going to turn Savannah loose in it, so that ought to be pretty wild. But stay tuned. Well, Savannah, what's your first thoughts? What do you think? I really like it. It's a lot of fun. I'm excited about it. He probably don't like it too. It's a problem. He'll have it tore up. <laughs> he took the whole tree down. Huh? He took the whole tree oh, you down. Picked one up. With the razor. We're doing some logging off the clock now. Like. I mean, wow. That's a decent sized branch in there. Really? <laughs> You're mulching off the clock. It's alright. It's tight in there. So this is a Gibson tractor right here. Um, they only make, they didn't make a whole lot of these, pretty rare. But it's a, it's just a garden tractor, but it's very interesting. You actually start it with a crank rope here. You pull it out, put it around this pulley, and give it a good crank. Obviously in neutral, <laughs> it'll run over you. Um, and it starts up. And then as far as the steering goes, you steer it right here with this lever. But uh, I guess that's how you plow your garden back in the day. What, uh, what does it cost to fill this thing? The truck? Uh, probably, right now, as high as fuel is, uh, $130, $140. This race is close, you know, it's two and a half hours. It'll probably take at least a tank, maybe a tank and a half to get up here and back. But, you know, you go out of mid-America, you're four tanks there and four tanks back. So what's an average weekend cost, then? You know, if you consider entry fee and... Uh, Fuel, food, and everything, you know, probably five to seven hundred dollars if you don't, you know, 
tear anything up, and then, you know, if you tear something up, then, then it's worse than that. You know, that, that'd be on a, a fairly close race. It, you know, it could definitely get on up there a thousand dollars or more. What's the furthest you've driven to race? The first I've been is uh, Texas Bridgeport. Uh, I've been down there twice. How many miles do you think you drive a year? I'm going to say we drive probably 12, 15,000 anyways, uh, at minimum. Do you remember what number you drew? What number you are? Where you're, where you're racing? 15. Late in the bouncer, but I don't remember the UTV. Savannah, do you remember where you're running? <laughs> uh, sorry. Running one, if everybody didn't know. Just want to make that clear. She's running number one because she's gonna be number one. That's right. Like, where do you where do you like to run in the pack? In the pack, you know. Um, I like mid pack pretty good because you know it's a. I don't know if you if you sit there too long, you know you can, you can overthink stuff. Um, but you know if you you go first, then you don't get to see what other drivers are gonna do, so you don't have that advantage. Um, but. Uh, then again, you know, it's it's kind of hit or miss on where it's at too, because stuff can dig out. You know, there's a lot of different uh, variables whenever you, you go talking about that. It depends on the park, really. Uh, up here where we're going, I think it can only get better, really, because it's it's usually pretty loose dirt in Hollywood, not real rocky or nothing. So it's probably going to get better as we go. So I'm pretty happy with my numbers this weekend, being 15 in the Cup. And, 18 in the bouncer, so both pretty late in both of them. So I think it'll probably be, be like a highway by the time we get there. That's what we're hoping for. What's your favorite park to race at? This would be up there pretty good. Um, I like Hollywood. Um, I like Wind Rock. I like, you know, Wind Rock's a really nice place. We just come from Hawk Pride. It's pretty rough, you know, but outside of the, you know, the park itself, I really like Hawk Pride. It can be pretty rough on equipment, but I do like Hawk Pride a lot. And that's one thing I love about this sport, you know, it's not like drag racing, you know, you're going to drag race down a straight track, you're never going to know what you're going into, what kind of hill you're going to be hitting, it's, it's, uh, it's different, you know, for sure. Clyde has made a lot of changes, you know, you guys aren't just shooting up the hill anymore, uh, he's gone to really a, a course style race, it's not just hill killing anymore, you know, what do you, how, how do you feel about that? Do you like that? Dislike I love it. it. Uh, that, that's my style of driving. I'm not a. I mean, I guess I do okay with it, but I'm not a. I'm not a bounty hill person. You know, I. I'm not. I don't like super super rough hill climbs. I, I'm. I feel like I'm faster in the. What you're talking about, you know, the turns and the twists and the ups and downs and the the, 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 the driver part of it. You know, uh, technical stuff. I guess you would say. I think it adds to it. it. It puts more room in there for error. It, it adds, you know, it makes it harder for times to be so tight, yet they still are, but uh, it, it puts more room in there for error, and I like that. Liberty 2 has rear steer uh, with these course style races and stuff. I mean, is this something that you use? Absolutely. Uh, I've, I've never been in a bouncer except for Liberty 2. You know, it's all new to me. I've raced it four times, five times in the town. Uh, but after driving it and racing it, I can't imagine racing one without it because, uh, you know, a razor, you can sling it around and it, it'll take it pretty good. Or, you know, one that's got good shocks on it, you know, you, you can drift it pretty good. But a big buggy, you know, it's, it's a lot of weight, it's a lot of tire, and without rear steer, you know, I don't know how comfortable I would be with slinging it around, you know. And, and you know, I'm sure it comes with time. And, and driving one, you know, and getting used to it, but um, I, I really like the rear steer, you know, I feel like it's definitely an advantage, and if you don't want to use it, it's there, you know, you just don't use it, it's, you just uh, don't touch it, so it's not a, a bad disadvantage there.